Good morning and welcome to Mountain View United Church's online worship service for Trinity Sunday. I pray that we'll all feel God's presence, the presence of the Creator, the Christ and the Spirit as we worship. A special welcome to any visitors who may be worshiping with us for the first time. Welcome. We hope that you will feel welcome here and that you will be moved by our service. Please join me in our call to worship. For the manyness of God's creative splendor, let us give thanks. Before Jesus, humility and the power of Christ's commands, let us stand in wonder. For the mystery of relationships, God's with us and ours with one another, let us seek God's holy wisdom. Come, let us worship the triune God. Let us come together in our opening prayer. Let us pray. 
You are one, O God, and you are three. You are majesty and mystery. Make us ever in your image, we pray. Make us one, make us we. Amen. What's a trinity? What's a trinity? That sounds like a big question, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Big questions with a big number! What is a trinity? That's a good question. Dr. Schnivenhausen? Yeah, a very good question. The word trinity means three in one. Try unity. Three in one. This is God. He is one. The one true God. But the Bible talks about God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and in the New Testament, God the Son. So there are three gods? No. The Bible tells us over and over that God is one. But God is made up of three persons. It's sort of like a triangle. A triangle has three sides, yet it is one triangle. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are the three sides of God. So God has parts? No. This is where it gets tricky. God the Father isn't a part of God, he's completely God. And God the Son isn't a part of God, he's completely God. The same is true for the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. All three persons are completely God.
Let us join in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of creation, we often imagine we must go it alone. Remind us at such moments of the we in your creation, the three in our baptism, and the one another in our community. Comfort and empower us as we gather in your spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I am with you always. Friends, seek earnestly to live in peace and know that the God of peace and love is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, beginning at verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Our Gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28, beginning at verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, the words you speak have power, power to create, power to disturb, power to heal. Help us to hear your word for us today. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday in the church calendar. Does that have any meaning for you in your life today? Does the Trinity matter to the person dealing with a diagnosis of cancer? What about for the person grieving the loss of a loved one or the couple struggling to stay together? Does it have any meaning to us who struggle with the COVID-19 pandemic? The answer is probably no to all those questions. What exactly is the Trinity? Well, the simple answer is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together they make up God, the triune God, one in three and three in one. Remember the old hymn that we sang at the beginning of our service? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. St. Augustine used this illustration of the Trinity. He likened it to a tree. The root is wood, the trunk is wood, 
The branches are wood. One wood, one substance, but three different entities. Each part of the wood is important to the whole. Another illustration might be the egg. Composed of three different entities, the shell, the yolk, and the white, they all make up the egg as a whole. Likewise, we need all parts of the Trinity. To focus on just God the Father or Creator or Mother or Source of Life would deny the very work and person of Christ and the ongoing activity of the Holy Spirit. To focus solely on Jesus, the Son, Redeemer, Friend, and Living Word, would miss the person of the Maker of heaven and earth, that part of God which is larger than what we can see and understand and is beyond our logic and reason. It would also miss the Holy Spirit, the ongoing presence of God with us today. And if we speak only of the Holy Spirit, sustainer, comforter, bond of love, we would miss the awesomeness and creativity of God and the redemptive work of Jesus, who is God in human flesh. Shirley Guthrie writes, the same God who is God over us as God, the Father and Creator, and God with and for us as the incarnate Word and Son, is also God in and among us as God the Holy Spirit. Stephen Eason says that we cannot go out into the world, according to Matthew's Jesus, without all of that. We are immersed or sprinkled into the whole being of God at our baptism whether we understand it or not. And that's what God calls us to do. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations. Now nations here really means Gentiles. And it was truly an impossible task. Sort of like telling you now to go into the world and cure cancer, clean up the environment, evangelize the unbelieving, and while you are at it, establish world peace. You see, that's the whole point here. It's sudden, such an utterly impossible task that it forces the disciples and us completely onto the mercy and strength of God. And that, my friends, is what life is like many days. A seemingly impossible task. How can we do this? How can we get out of bed on those days when all seems dark and hopeless? How can we face one more medical appointment or treatment? I believe the answer is in the very last sentence of our gospel reading this morning. Jesus says to his small band of followers, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's the promise that God makes to us. We are not alone. This great promise isn't an afterthought. It's our only hope of fulfilling the great commission given at the end of Matthew's gospel, sharing the good news of God's grace in Christ with the world through word and deed, and welcoming all into fellowship through baptism. Christ will be with us, not just in some future unknown time. Christ is with us now, here. Christ is with us amid our struggles at home or at work or at school or in our congregations or in the world. Christ is with us amid our struggles with the COVID-19 pandemic. Christ is with us, encouraging us, comforting us, working with us, guiding us, granting us the grace and courage necessary to be the people of God in the world right now. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. to all of you who are taking the time to check in with others in our congregation. Thanks to those of you who continue to support Mountain View by par or by mailing or dropping off your envelopes. Your support is greatly appreciated at this difficult time. For your convenience, Mary Allen will be at the church on Wednesday afternoons from 1 to 2 p.m 
to receive your gifts if you would like to drop them off. Let us pray. Gracious God, Holy Trinity, we offer the gifts that we have received this week and ourselves to be instruments of your ever new creation. Amen. Let us pray and let us do so in hopes that God will shape us in the image of our prayers. Eternal God, God of each day, be with us in each of our days, we pray. Be with us in our seeing as we survey the world around us, as we look upon the people whose lives are bound up with our own, let ours be a seeing that is not afraid to look at pain. Let ours be a seeing that can recognize the joy that is a certain sign of your active presence. God be with us in our touching as we reach out to help and to hold. May ours be a touch that brings healing where there is hurt that builds up and strengthens what is broken. Be with us in our decisions, in the choices we make, in the new directions we may venture into. May ours be choices that bring us closer to you, that demonstrate a faithful stewardship of gifts and resources you have placed in our hands. God be with us in our routines, in the dailiness of living in the common places of our lives. Bless to us the circle within which our lives are lived. By your spirit, refresh us when the everyday seems a burden. Be with us, O oh God, as we pray in quietness lifting to you our thanksgivings and our concerns for our world, our church, and ourselves. Hear our prayers, and in your love, answer. Hear our prayers, O God, for we bring them in the name of Christ, who taught us to to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Faith in Action is submitted by Reverend Danny Compton. Following the extraordinary news from the women that Jesus was alive and his subsequent visits to the upper room where the disciples were in hiding, the eleven disciples left for Galilee to a mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet with them. Matthew, who was present, writes years later, The moment they saw him, they worshipped him, but some still had lingering doubts. The Irish playwright and political activist George Bernard Shaw once wrote, The worst sin towards our fellow creatures is not to hate them, but to be indifferent to them. That is the essence of inhumanity. I don't presume to speak for God, yet I would think that an honest doubter has a better chance of grasping the faith offered by Jesus than does an indifferent bystander. Perhaps Matthew was one of those with lingering doubts. I love the prayer of the person who said, Lord, I am not willing to go your way, but I am willing to be made willing. Is it possible that those who have never doubted have never really believed? Many followers of Jesus, myself included, are those who whose deepest convictions have grown out of a personal struggle with serious doubt. I think perhaps a good starting point in our search to know and to keep growing in our faith comes from St. Paul's writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. Anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much, but if a person passionately loves God, they will possess the knowledge of God. A professor that I had in seminary, Robert Frost, not the poet, would say, When we talk about God, at best we are like a four-year-old telling our three-year-old sibling about our parents. Matthew chapter 28, verse 17, The moment they saw him, they worshipped him but many still had lingering doubts. And a few sentences later, after giving what is called the Great Commission, the last recorded words by Jesus in Matthew's Gospel is, Never forget, I am with you every day, even to the completion of this age. Amen. Hear these words of the ancient church. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Go forth to live in peace. Amen.